Lord, we thank you for Brother Jeff. Father, we thank you that he's doing better, but we ask you, Lord, to continue to touch his body, body Lord. We pray, Lord, for Brother Jimmy, that you restore his hearing to him, Lord. Bless Sister Stephanie and keep her strong, Lord, as she helps to care for Jimmy. Father, we continue to ask you to strengthen Sister Linda and Brother Lynn. We pray for Brenda's, Brenda's UTI this morning. Lord, we know that you can heal her. And so we request, Lord, that you touch her. We ask you to comfort the Toll family in the loss of their mother. We pray, Lord, for Cassidy, who's experiencing these heart issues, Lord, and for Justin, her husband, and the, and the entire family, Lord, that you'd bring some clarity, Lord. We pray for Janine's circulation issues. Father God, that you'd Help them to find what they need to do to bring about a healing in her body. And Lord, you can also just touch her and heal her right now. We pray for our sister's mother in Baltimore who is having problems breathing this morning. We pray for the little boy that Brenda reminded us of that has a brain tumor, Lord. Father God, while they're trying to decide what is the best course of action, touch his body, remove that tumor, heal that tumor, Lord, and let that boy be completely well. We pray for Brother Rick, Lord, who is still in the hospital here in Milledgeville. We ask you in the name of Jesus, Lord, to remove that infection from his body and restore him to back to complete and perfect health. Take all the... The, the soreness, the, the pain, and the discomfort with it and remove it all in Jesus' name, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord, that you're hearing our prayers and your word says that you will answer. We hold on to that now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Amen Elizabeth. Praise God for Elizabeth. If you have an offering, there's a plate over there on the uh, table. You can put it in there as you're leaving. If you're watching online and you would like to give an offering, you can do it in many different ways. You can send it through Cash App, PayPal, Venmo. We got all those new deals. E even uh, Zelle. You can even send money to the church now by Zell. So do that. Uh, if you want to just mail it to the church, the church's address is 112 Jacqueline Terrace, Northwest, Milledgeville, Georgia, 31061. Please consider giving to the Lord as part of your worship. Well, here we are, the fourth Sunday past Easter. Can you believe that there's already been four Sundays since Easter? I mean, it's been that fast. Does anybody else's days seem to go just like that? I'm going to read a couple of scriptures from the Word of God in Acts, the fourth chapter, the fifth verse. It says, The next day the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Ananias, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the priest's family. When they made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name do you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of the good deeds done to someone who was sick, and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom 
you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, and it has become the chief cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name given among mortals by which we must be saved. <clears throat> Psalms 23, all of us have read that at least a dozen times. God is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul and he leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of darkness, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and the staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David wrote that psalm during a time in his life when it seemed bleak and it seemed like the end. Well, we know it's not the end for David because we are here, we're still here and David continued on. But all of us will have times in our lives when it seems like everything is not right. When we're in the middle of darkness, when we're in the middle of the valley of death. It's during those times that we have to reach out <coughs> and get a hold of God and realize that God is still with us, that he's right there caring for us, and he's watching over us. It's during those times that we put our trust in what we cannot see. On Thursday night, we, in our Bible study on Zoom, we have a Zoom Bible study, and during that time, we talked about what faith was. And one of the sisters said that faith is believing in things you can't see. Does that sound like many of your days? When you have to, to trust and believe in God, even if you can't see it? You don't know how it's going to work out. You don't know how it's going to be fixed, but you just trust God. I was thinking the other day how blessed I was the day that I met Sister Debbie. Because as a young man, and we got one young man here today. I see two. Oh, you see two? <laughs> He's calling you a young man too, brother. You better give him a pat on the bat for that one, huh? Well, that means that I'm the old man then, right? <laughs> But when I was very young, I did not have any idea what my future would bring. And I had been through what we call today, or what people used to call in my time, the dating scene. It was not fun. When God brought Debbie into my life and confirmed that to me with different signs, it changed everything about my future and it changed my entire life and perspective. In fact, I've told her this and I'll tell this again many times, without her in my life, and you, you probably say the same thing about Linda, without her in your life, you would not be who you are today. You would not be where you are today not even be able to think about the things of life without that person. John 3, or 1 John 3, verse 16 says, We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. We always think of Jesus Christ as dying for us, and that's true. 
But do you, do you realize, do we realize that he really cares about what happens to us every day? That he cares about our future, that he cares about our present. That he's doing whatever he can to make our lives beautiful. Little Gabe came home the other day and said, if God is all powerful, why can't he turn out the light? You know, God can do anything, but there are some things that God allows us to do. And that's choices. We get to make choices. You know, I think back on those young days and I, I am so grateful to God that he did do something in my life. Because a few choices that I was getting ready to make, I wish I had made. And I'm glad I didn't make. But it was because God helped me to make those choices correctly. Each one of us are going to go through different periods of testing and struggles and striving, unsurety, times when we just don't know what to do next. And it's during that time that we trust God to give us hope. It says, little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and we will reassure our hearts before, us, before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness for, before God, and we, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments. Yesterday I was listening to another pastor friend, and he was talking about how so many people in the world do not realize that their decisions are what is affecting them. They're saying, God, why has this happened? Or God, why are, why are they doing this? Or why are they doing that? And they don't realize that by certain decisions, they have made things in motion. Do you know by obedience, you can bring about certain things? And by disobedience, you can bring about other things. <clears throat> when I used to go to prison as a chaplain. The sad thing about being there was that here were men who had made a lot of bad decisions and now they were suffering for those decisions. One man came to me one morning and he was weeping and I said, what is wrong? And he said, they just told me that I can't go to my mother's funeral. And I felt compassion for him. I felt sad for him. But I also realized that this man had done something that was horrible and that that had caused him to be put into a, a place where he had to reflect on that. And one of the consequences of that decision was that he couldn't go to his mother's funeral. He could blame God. He could blame the state of Georgia. He could blame the prisons. But really, it was his decision that caused all of that. That's encouraging to me to make good decisions. It's encouraging to me that we should always pray before we make decisions, especially decisions that could affect all of our futures. John, the 10th chapter, says this, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. We may not like to be called sheep. We may have different animals that are our favorite. But you know why God chose sheep? He chose sheep because it shows exactly or at least partially how we are. You know, sheep, they won't usually do anything unless somebody tells them. They'll just stand right there and they'll <clears throat> let a tree fall on them. Uh, they'll, they'll drink bad water. They won't move if there's a, a, a wolf in the way. It takes a shepherd to tell them, you got to get over here. You got to move over there. You got to do this. You got to do that. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're stubborn too. But there's no stubborn people, right? 
human beings are not stubborn. Human beings are so smart and so intelligent, they don't need any advice from God or anyone else. We know what we're doing. <coughs> so many people in our world today, and it is, it is visible, we can see it. People will make every effort to buy the new boat that they want, or every effort to buy the new car that they want. They'll do whatever it takes to buy the new house on the lake. Then when it comes to God, they'll put $10 in the offering, or they'll put a dollar in there, or they'll give God what they have. Well, let's see, what do I have in my pocket? They don't put God first. They don't make him number one. We can sit and watch a movie for four or five hours, and it's no big deal. But we go to church, and we can't wait for it to get over. <laughs> we're already making plans of what we're going to do the rest of the, of the day. We might be able to read a book for hours, but read the Bible for five minutes. We need the shepherd in our life. We need Jesus in every aspect of our life. And so we need to make sure that we listen to the voice of God when he speaks to us. God has spoken to me at missions. He's spoke, spoken to me at camp. He spoke to me in this church right here many times. I don't talk about this a lot because I don't want to give credibility to the devil, but years ago, sometimes, on occasion, we would feel a, a spirit in this place, an oppressive spirit in this place. Wasn't always there. Wasn't always able to feel it. But one night, Brother William came to me and he said, Terry, come here, I want, I want to ask you something. And so he took me to that door over there. He opened that door. He said, do you see that sitting up there in the corner? And I said, yes, I do. He said, that spirit has been tormenting this church for years. And I said, well, let's pray. And so we began to pray against that spirit. And nothing happened right then. But a few days later, him and I were walking through the building, we were going somewhere, maybe we we're going out front to mow the grass or something, I don't remember, but we walked through the building and he said, Pastor, it's gone. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah, it's gone. And so I tried to sense and feel it, and it was, it was gone. And you know, we've never felt that spirit again, not once. What could have happened in that room? Well, there's been various things. God delivered a man from drugs in that room. It took four days for him to get through the detox. Brother William and I stayed here in this church, and he stayed in that room. We wouldn't let him out of that room because he wanted to go buy drugs, so we wouldn't let him out of that room. We just kept him right there. He would holler and scream and sometimes try to open that door. That spirit probably left his body and then just stayed in that room until God removed it. I've had God speak to me about good things. I've had him tell me about plans and things that I should take and that I should do. One of my sons came to me one time and was telling me that he was thinking about marrying this particular girl. And I remember that my first response was, you need to wait. You just need to wait. Don't, don't make any quick decisions. Don't, uh, don't do anything rash. Just wait. And it wasn't more than a couple of days that we were sitting on the couch in the living room and God spoke to me and he spoke to me clearly and said, it's time for them to do it. Go ahead and be married. You know, when I told him that, 
It wasn't that I gave him permission to get married because I can't do that. But when I told him that, it gave him comfort to know that God cared about a decision that he was making and that God was blessing that decision. One time we had a visitor come and it just happened to be that day that we were blessing somebody's car. And they said, what are y'all doing? We said, well, we're blessing this car. God blessed this person with this car, so we're blessing it. So well, why do you do that? We do it because we acknowledge that God is the giver of all things. Listen, if you're, if you're blessed today, you need to acknowledge that God is blessing you. You need to acknowledge that he is your good shepherd. There's so many that are wandering in the wilderness of life without God. If God is with you and God is helping you, if God is showing you the way, the next steps in your life, then you need to acknowledge that and be grateful. This morning after church, we'll be making some sandwiches for those that are in need. One of the things that has always been important to me as a Christian is that I do tangible things for those that have needs. Not everybody is blessed like you. Not everybody's blessed like me. And it's important for us to help others. As a good shepherd, Jesus helps us. But he doesn't help us just so that we can be good. He helps us so that we can help others to bring them along the way. If you're grateful that God has blessed you with the things that you have today, would you say amen? amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you're our good shepherd. We thank you that you watch out for us and that you keep us even when we're not sure what steps to take next. We're thankful, Lord, that even when we make mistakes, you guide us back to the truth. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to continue to guide us, to continue to be our shepherd, to continue to show us the next steps of our life. Lord, help us to confess. Help us to believe that you're in charge and that you want the best for each one of us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you don't know Jesus, and you're watching online, maybe on YouTube somewhere, you can, you can accept him right now, and you can receive him into your life. All you need to do is repent of your sins, and just say, Jesus, come and live with me. Come and be with me right now. If you want to do that, say this prayer with me. Say, Father, I recognize I'm a sinner, and I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to come into my life and help me to find the way, the way that you would want me to live my life. Guide me, Lord. Be my shepherd today. Thank you, Jesus. If you did that prayer, send me a message, and I'll send you a book. won't be no cost to you at all, but I'll send you that book that will help you to begin your walk with Jesus. Now we're going to take communion, and if you can, get you a piece of bread, a cracker, and some juice. You might say, well, I'm not good enough to take communion. That's right, we're not. Jesus made us good. <laughs> Jesus made us right with God. It's because of him that we're, we're able to proclaim our salvation the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you're saved today, say amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we, we eat and drink in remembrance of you. And we thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. Thank you for taking away our sins, Lord. Thank you for healing our bodies, Lord. We pray for healing for those who are watching. In Jesus' name. Eat and drink in Jesus' name.
peace of the Lord Jesus Christ continue to be with you and in you. And may you go forth and show his love to all those you meet. Do good today in Jesus' name and have a blessed week. Amen.